What's up, guys? It's Cal Uh I know it's been a while. I'm happy to be back uh, talking to you guys. It's, I think my last upload was somewhere like August. Uh, lots of new changes, lots of new things going on with the channel. I kind of want to see about changing the form of the videos. Uh, in short, I, I want to say without sounding uh, prideful or, you know, false humble or something like that. I feel like I've, I've learned quite a lot over this period that I haven't been on YouTube, and it's given me a different perspective. I've done a lot of internal struggle, a lot of uh, battling, fighting with this this desire to, you know, get back what was taken. And uh, I remember hearing a quote from a movie, uh, I believe it was No Country for Old Men, and if you guys have seen that, you, you may have heard this quote in it, um, but it's toward the end, and uh, the quote is really impactful. It's basically, uh, all the time spent trying to get back what was taken, more is going out the door. After a certain point, you just have to get a tourniquet on it. It's a, a very, you know, uh, rough, bony way to present the idea, but uh, that's how I feel. I feel like spirituality and the formality of organized religion has, it has, uh, it's turned me off to that, that whole avenue, unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it. But I, I feel like I can't ascribe to any spiritual dogma, any, any ideology of spirituality that a certain people group holds. And I think that's for a good reason. I don't think you're supposed to. Uh, I still see life as a simulation, some sort of game, this experience we're having behind our human eyes. I still very much see that. I still am aware of that. And I don't want to make this intro too long. I want to get into the video <laughs> uh, that I wrote out. I, I, I found that writing my ideas and presenting them is much more uh, concise, conducive of a good video, entertaining to watch. Um, so anyway... I feel like I'm moving away from traditional what it means to be a spiritual person. I feel like in that we're being caged, we're being limited. Any sort of identifier is a limiting identifier, regardless of what type of identifier it is. <laughs> I had a, a conversation with someone years and years ago, uh, and that person was saying to me, I just don't want to be labeled. I want to live outside of labels. And I was like, well, that is a label, living outside of labels. And they were like, no, no, no. I don't want to be confined to anyone's label because I'm confined. At the time, I didn't know what that was. I didn't know what that meant. Uh, but now, I feel like I've got a, a much, much different view. And I feel like uh, for the uh, the veterans, the OGs on the channel, you guys know what happened with uh, uh, He Who Shall Not Be Named. <laughs> uh, you guys know that whole situation. And the magic and all these other things. I believe there's magic in the world, but I don't believe it. It expresses itself the way um, that was presented there. Um, there's a lot that goes into that. I don't want to spend too much time, you know, um, dotting the I's and crossing the T's and, you know, adding T to the cup and all this other business. I don't want to go too much in depth on that. Again, I don't want this intro to be super long, but it's been a long time, so I feel like you guys should get some introduction. Um some some recap on where I've been, what I've been doing for so long. Um, and honestly, I've just been kind of putting the pieces of myself back together, learning who I am again, kind of going back to basics and really figuring out what's going on. A lot of things have happened that I'm not going to mention because they're not pertinent to you all. And that's part of the reason why the channel is going to be changing. I'm Due to the recent changes, due to what's what's happened over the past year, years of this channel, I feel my role, though some of you will argue, my role isn't so much to be a guru or a teacher for anyone. That doesn't mean that I can't express ideas or concepts in a way that is informative and that helps you all. And that's what I intend to do. Uh, I like expressing ideas. I like sharing these ideas and these concepts because in teaching them, I learn. If you guys believe in the law of one and teach slash learning and that sort of thing, if you believe in that, then, you know, it kind of makes sense of what I'm talking about here. Uh, but 
I like teaching. I like sharing these ideas because it helps me to clear the fog and kind of navigate clearer throughout this reality. Um, I'm still a very weird, strange dude. I still have very strange astral experiences. And I do believe if I had to make my own religion, which I'm definitely not, <laughs> that's not going to happen. <laughs> I was close. I was very close for a minute. Uh, but that's not going to happen. Um, if I had to make my own religion, astral projection and gnosis, Gnosticism would be at the core of it. The idea that you have to experience what it is you call reality. You have to experience whatever this thing is in your own way and, you know, make it whatever you want it to be. But you shouldn't be taking other people's stories, other people's experiences and kind of plastering them over yourself. This intro has already gone way longer <laughs> than intended. Uh, but that's the way these things go. Um, I feel like I should say without saying too much. I don't want anyone to have experienced hardship or difficulty from the things that have happened in the past. But I also know that mistakes that I make, mistakes that other people make, are learning experiences for you all, for other people, because they are for me in, in any case. Um, going forward, just like in my last video about authenticity, going forward, I don't want you all to see me as a guru or as uh, someone enlightened or anything like that. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. There'd be no reason for me to continue this. I'm here learning just like you all. Um, the only difference is I'm able to express my ideas in a stream of consciousness, concise, entertaining way most times. And you guys like listening to that. You don't, and I stress this before getting into this video, you don't need me to express or explain anything to you. Anybody coming to my channel, I am not the fork in the road, the signpost, any of that. I am just another guy living out this experience, going through this life, uh, writing down my experiments, what astral projection does for me, what I learned through my uh, exploration of psychedelics, and like... I'm trying to map what consciousness is and how it's expressed in this reality. And I gain a sense of completion, a sense of fulfillment when I share that information with people, when I disseminate that information into a palatable, physical, graspable form taken from this etheric, you know, very abstract place that it's in currently. Um, I think reality is very abstract. It's very strange, very weird. And we've learned to make sense of it. And in that learning to make sense of it, we've ignored the strangeness. And I'm here to reintroduce you to the strangeness. <laughs> or if you are a spiritual veteran like myself, you've got your scars and bruises from the mistakes and the learning process. Maybe you just want somebody to affirm your ideas. And I'm here for that. So going forward, I'm not a guru. Uh, the channel is going to change a bit. I'm not here to take anyone on. I'm not teaching anyone anymore for the foreseeable future. I'm not doing the guru thing. I'm not doing the mentoring thing. This is it. This is all of me the world is going to see. <laughs> this is it. Um, this is all I'm doing. And I feel like this is going to be very freeing because I can be very open and honest and share who I am with you guys and what I learned. And I feel like that's the point. So... Uh, the way my videos are going to be, I may do like intros like this where I express like an idea, kind of give you like a you know, basic of what's going on. And then I'll go into basically a script that I've written and I'm just going to read from it and kind of provide annotation throughout. So uh, because there are ideas I want to actually reach. Otherwise, I'll just talk in circles for an hour. <laughs> Those who are uh, accustomed to my videos are very familiar with this. Uh, I do talk a lot in circles often. Uh, but I don't want to, I, I want to grow, scale up, you know, I don't, I don't want that to be the case all the time. Uh, this is the background, by the way, you've seen in the previous videos. I'm not concerned too much with video quality here. Audio quality, yes. I you know, I have the mic right here. I want that to be a thing. But um, mostly I want you guys to take the information and I want the community to be built. I feel like that's really... That's the only thing I can really hold on to as real here in this world is the connections that I make with other people and 
That's what this video is about. This video uh, is about this concept, this idea. I wanted to write a book about it, but I'm not going to. Anything I make from here on out is going to be free. It's going to be just here on YouTube. I was thinking about making a website. I don't know. I've been working on it, but I don't know. Here on YouTube is most accessible, most easy, and price works. Okay, it, it's free. Everything is free here. Um, I, I might even uh, unmonetize my channel. I don't really care about any of that anymore. Um, little to say I've moved past it. And any information about what I've been doing in the past isn't as important as what I'm about to share with you in this video. I wanted to write a book about what I've been calling connection. Now, it's, it may sound strange, it may sound aloof, but connection, the, the chills we feel, the sense of fulfillment, this, this gaping hole in the heart, this, this uh, eagerness of the soul, uh, that we get into this sense of oneness and what people would call enlightenment, I've taken to calling connection. I've recently taken my previous book off of Amazon. Again, I don't want anything to cost money that I have. And there's a masterclass program out there somewhere that I have to get rid of as well because I don't want people to pay for that either. I want everything to be free here on YouTube. Um, but you guys can find the Cure for Enlightenment book I think I'll link it under this video uh, to like a Google Doc or if you guys want to read it. Uh, otherwise, I might just make it an audiobook here that may be more entertaining for you. Uh, so that'll probably do that. In any case, connection is what this, this video is about, is what the talk is going to be about. This is going to be a longer video. I'm, I'm seeing now. <laughs> I'm already 13 minutes in. Uh, so this is going to be a much longer video uh, than I intended. So pack in if you're at work or if you're listening to this while relaxing, whatever the case may be, this is where the channel is going to be going. More of a podcasty sort of feel for every episode. I'm just sharing ideas. I'm not going to be super editing anything anymore. I feel like that gets away from the whole point of the video and it, it kind of gears me toward wanting more subscribers, wanting more views. And that's not what that's about. Uh, so connection. Connection, in short, is the... The chills, that sense of oneness, that sense of instant enlightenment that you get because you're connected to source, you're connected to the real that's happening here. The you know, in the Matrix, Morpheus said, "The real, the desert of the real. This is the real. Uh, this reality is, if you believe in Hermeticism, it's the basic level of reality." And I'll get into that more in the video. But the farther away from this baser level of reality you get, the closer you get to source, the more oneness you feel with everything, because everything indeed, if you believe this, this is, it's a possibility that everything is one, everything is connected, uh, the same ray coming from the one light, you know, many rays leading to one light in a sense. Uh, so that's what the video is going to be about in short. Hmm, I may put a timestamp to skip this intro. I don't know if you guys like these intros like this. Uh, but uh, I hope you guys are having your best day. If not, choose to do so because your reality exists in your mind. I like that intro. <laughs> I'm assuming some of you do as well. Um, if you're not having a good day, please choose to choose to change that because that's, that's where it begins, uh, you know, with your mindset. So uh, I don't know if I'm going to keep the video going. I may just put a picture up. I don't know. Maybe weird looking at me like read lines. So I may just put a picture up, some psychedelic AI-generated picture. I don't know. Um, but yeah, presentation isn't as important as the material being presented. So we'll go ahead with that. If you guys hear any noises in the background, I'm in a noisy place. And I think that's how it's meant to be right now. <laughs> so uh, let's get into it. So... Uh, for some time now, I've tried to figure out what this human experience is. This, not just the nature of it, but the true fullness of what it is. I know we're having a shared experience of perception through human bodies. We endure the trials of being human, the stress, the fear of the unknown, all of that. Uh, we're all familiar with what being human or, you know, what it means basically to be human. You know, we've all gone, we, we've gone through it, we've faced it, we, we know what it is to come face to face with life and have it 
uh, you know, hit us with the Mike Tyson, you know, the uh, Diamati shuffle and you know, you know, all that. Uh, but in that basic presentation is a world of complexity. You know, we know the basic of humanity. But in that basic presentation of what human is, I feel like in lies a hidden complexity. There's a tapestry woven with a myriad of human emotions and interconnected strings of occurrence. Any talk of reality begs the inclusion, I think, of consciousness. And many of you will agree. Uh, after all, what is reality without an audience? It's the same story about the tree in the woods that falls. The tree doesn't exist without conscious awareness. If there's no one there to see it, to hear it, does it make a sound? Does it actually fall? Or in short, does it actually exist? You know, who's to say the tree would have rendered it all, given the simulation theory? For those of us who share that idea, it's very plausible that things don't load into the game unless there is a real character there to see it. The same concept accepts the inclusion of a blind man in a world of light. If we were all born without eyes, would light actually exist? And it's a very interesting spiritual question. If we didn't have the faculty to understand reality, would we then, as conscious human beings, wonder for our place in the universe? I watched a video on another channel that I, I draw a lot of inspiration from and has helped me through my transition away from the material world and into more of a seeking of soul and self, this channel called uh, Quantum of Conscious. A very good channel. You guys should pay it a visit. I mean, this is not like a sponsor or anything like that. It's just good content. Someone else who doesn't monetize anything, everything he puts out is free. And he's just sharing information for people on the road uh, towards self-fulfillment and actualization. So I think he's a really good channel to check out. Uh, but uh, back to it. Now, the scientist in me is screaming, all this woo-woo will get you sick. Put a coat on, don't forget to tie your shoes, and yes, my little scientist in me uh, cares about my health and whether or not I'm being led astray by, you know, the conspiracies about aliens and all these other things. And have you guys seen the alien conspiracies lately? The, um, the slow drip, uh, you know, dissemination or... Yeah, I forget what the word is called that describes it. Uh, disclosure. The slow drip disclosure that we've been getting is kind of almost turning me off from the alien story. Like, I almost don't care because it's so uninteresting. But I feel like it's a distraction away from what reality is actually about. That could just be me, but, uh, you know. Uh, but seriously, there are two domains of knowing in this world. And I might step into some esoteric explanations here. I don't want to frighten people who are new to this channel hearing this information, but again, I am a very etheric, a very abstract thinking, expressing sort of person, and I feel like the people on this channel enjoy that. So uh, there are two domains of knowing in this world. There is the knowing called science that says this reality has rules that can't be broken and thus is very real. Arguably, the only thing that is real and any quarry beyond the bounds of accepted convention is, as Sheldon from The Big Bang Theory would put, hokum. It's just nonsense. Foolishness. And you shouldn't waste any of your time on it. Believe nothing of what your intuition tells you, basically. This all sounds silly, I know that. But part of reality is going down the path, staying the course, so to speak. When you endeavor to do a thing in this reality, you must go through manifesting. You must go through this process of creation, of birthing. And so manifestation is simply the process by which things come into existence in this reality. In my opinion, based on what I've experienced out of body and my knowing, manifestation starts in higher levels of reality. And so... These levels of reality are just as important as this one we live in, but it has a different function. We are here, as many of you may already understand in this spiritual community, uh, we're here to learn. If you've 
looked up or studied the likes of Dolores Cannon, uh, anything about quantum healing hypnosis or life between lives or anything like that that requires channeling or hypnosis work, they all like to say we're here to learn. This is a school. This is a teaching experiment. Other people like to say that Earth is a soul trap. I don't buy into any of that because as sentient, uh, transcendent beings who chose to come here, I think, we would be far more powerful than a trap for our souls. But that's to get a, around the topic. Uh, that's to address the open reality's idea about soul traps. But I'm not, I don't really agree with that. I personally see our time here as a boot camp. Not so much for an impending war, but for a new type of reality, a new type of experience. We're here to learn how to manipulate energy. Okay, Cal, what are you talking about? I know I'm, I'm getting to that. As I said, this reality must follow a set of celestial rules set to govern its properties so that it can be distinguished from the realms above. In this reality, you can't click your heels three times and teleport home. You can't simply think about something into being, and you can't, in this reality, just make something happen instantly. There is always a cause and effect. And if you guys know anything about or believe anything pertaining to the Kabbalion, uh, the hermetic laws or the, the governing principles of the universe, there is always a cause and effect. And in this reality, that cause and effect is most powerful because the higher realms affect this lower one, if that makes sense. The realms that are closer to source tend to have more power over this reality. This level of reality can be closely related to outer space. Reality isn't two-dimensional, and so naturally, neither are the higher realities. And I know I may be jumping around a lot here, but stick with me. I, this reality requires a process of manifestation, and that process also manifests itself, interestingly enough, in the presentation of ideas. I can't just give you the idea. I can't just give you what I'm talking about. Bang, here it is. You can go away now. <laughs> I have to lull you through or almost lazy river you down this trail of thought until we reach the conclusion. So buckle in, strap in. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a while. <laughs> uh, I, I tried to get this down a few pages, but it came out to five, so my apologies. Uh, we're getting there, guys. We're, we're, we're making our way downtown. Uh, so the higher realities, the higher realms of reality are presented in the different trees of life you can find throughout esoteric culture, but I always felt like they lacked something, and more so now that I've been doing more research. They're always depicted as trees or geometric hierarchies for anyone who's looked into the um, Islamic tree of life, the Arabic tree of life, or the uh, Hermetic tree of life, the Klepothic or the Sephirothic trees of life, these uh, Hebrew trees of life. They all bear these same things in common. They're all geometric hierarchies or straight depiction of trees or depictions of chakra systems. But they are never expressed in three dimensions, which is interesting because our reality, this reality we live in, is three dimensional. You know, uh, the X, the Y and the Z plane. It's, it's three dimensional reality, possibly even higher dimensions. Perhaps still, the higher you go, the closer you get to source, in a sense, directly correlates to higher dimensions, like the fourth and the fifth. Now, I once heard a story of uh, someone's experience on the Joe Rogan podcast, and he said he had taken, I believe, ayahuasca. And in this experience, he reached a place where it was an infinite white space. But in that infinite white space he knew he was in the fifth dimension or a higher dimension. And in this place, thought would instantly manifest. And he could see the process of that thought going from the fifth dimension where he was down to this physical reality, 3D space, and manifest there. He saw the process. And so I, I think that's very interesting how that works out. Uh, I'm bringing all of this up to further iterate my initial point about manifestation. In this reality... 
things must be birthed. Birth isn't an instant process, as I'm sure a lot of you are aware of. It's something that happens in an unseen place first. In Arabic dialects, the word unseen can be translated as jinn. The correlation there can't be a coincidence. We all know the process of birth. There is the energy release during intercourse, the seed and the egg, plenty of symbolism I can go into there, but I'm, for sake of time, I won't. Then there is the creation in the unseen place. Again, lots of biblical and spiritual revelations to be revealed in creation in the unseen. And only after all of that and nine months of, you know, suffering in the childbirthing, that is the nature of this reality. Energies must first congeal before later taking shape and being revealed. And I felt that's the overall point of this reality. This reality is perhaps one of the farthest removed from source because creation here takes a very, very long time to complete. It's no surprise to the veterans of this channel that I value astral projection very highly. You guys know this. Used to be years ago, I regarded astral projection as the key to uncovering life's mysteries. I've since changed my outlook a little bit. Firstly, I feel there is an overimportance placed on the title and distinction of different metaphysical states. To concern yourself with the difference between astral projection and lucid dreaming and remote viewing and any other spiritual or psychic experience is to waste your time. The difficulty in this reality is the challenge of ego the constant analyzer, the dividing force in this game we call life. If left to its own whims, the ego would categorize everything around you and within you to minutia and mundane. Even your thoughts would be named and profiled, set away, filed away, close the cabinet, it's done. The ego is here to define what you are and what you are not. If you identified with everything, you wouldn't learn anything. Let me say that one more time. If you identified with everything, you wouldn't learn anything. That may sound a little confusing, but think about it. This reality doesn't work unless you believe you are a single entity going about it. Part of this game is believing you are who your ID says you are. The only way that you can happen is with the ego to draw the line in the sand. The only way that'll work is if you have something that divides the line between you and reality. This is you. This is not. Astral projection, or what I'll call connection in this case, is much more than a fun trip. It's a revelation about nature, about the qualities of who you are. You see, I think there is an intimate interplay between the conscious awareness and the unfolding of reality. Consciousness is the experience and the after image of it. It's the ability to see and have seen, to be and have been. It's tough to describe connection, uh, so many call it uh, enlightenment astral projection, or samadhi, connection reveals the interconnectedness of everything. Think about astral travel for a moment. Many people still believe they need to travel with a double or an astral body. It's very funny, I think. Don't you realize the irony of that? You're leaving a body to travel in another body. That's just another type of limitation. Projection should be the removal of limits. But as I said about the base level reality, that's a part of the process. So all of this to say there are multiple grade levels in this school of experience. Once we finish the human class, I think we move on to the mind experience, which is existence apart from ego. Mind is boundless and as such must exist apart from ego. Mind can fathom ego, thus must transcend it, because you can't fully grasp and understand a thing 
if you are a part of that thing. So you must be transcended above it. And I've said many times on this channel, you can't beat a system or overpower a system that you are a slave to. So we must transcend the ego because we can observe it. Otherwise, the ego would divide the mind and we would be filed away. So going back to the creation process in this reality, here things take time because they are manifesting from nothing into something, from astral into terrestrial, so to speak. Mind, on the other hand, has no location to delay creation. One more time. Mind, on the other hand, has no locational distance to travel that will delay its creation. Anything thought up exists already in the theater of the mind, and thus instantly is created. All experiences are those of creation. In the realm of mind, ego is but a creation, one of infinitely many. For instance, in multivariate calculus, and I'm sorry if I lose a lot of you here, but I've been doing a lot of study of mathematics, so here you go. A three-dimensional vector has infinitely many orthogonal vectors that could attach to it. An orthogonal basically just means parallel, or excuse me, perpendicular. Basically meaning, if mind is a vector, and a vector is a traje uh, trajectory from one point to another, it is the line defining direction and magnitude. If mind is a line defining the magnitude of something, from here to there, motion, existence. If mind is a vector, a path from here to there, a vehicle, like the physical body, if you will, that vector has infinitely many connecting minds to build a network or a central hub of minds. Now, this is a very abstract notion, but this is what I've been kind of tackling over the past months. In a sense, this reality is a hive mind that we call source. Fortunately, free will exists here, or at least it seems to. So there is mind, the theater. There is ego, the dividing force. And there is a way to move from one to the other. And that is the nature of connection. What is the purpose of connection? Why are things connected? Because they need to be. Connection fulfills the purpose of providing a link, a necessary link between one thing and another. The passageway from this baser reality to the higher, more illustrious is through connection. It makes perfect sense. The tunnels that I see when I astral project, the tunnels I've seen during psychedelic trips where I'm flying through a tunnel, moving and zooming through this, you know, uh, kaleidoscopic tunnel, this, this passageway, I'm moving from this reality to a more real, yet more abstract and ethereal reality. Now, I know I haven't done a great job describing what connection is so far, because to do so would be, honestly, to limit your own natural experience of it and your own understanding of it. Right now, I assume a lot of you are drawing up your own ideas of what connection is, and that is perfect. If I could present to you an idea, and then you take that idea, and again, you give birth to that idea, I've, I've merely planted the seed in your mind. You have to nurture it and give birth to that idea. It has to blossom. And I just, just had amazing revelation here. They call it the thousand petal lotus, the crown chakra, is that lotus opens up. It has to bloom and blossom the ideas. That's where the ideas are blossomed. And ideas are birthed in part by a planting of the seed here in the physical but they come down from higher realms. This is all just, I'm just getting these ideas right now. I didn't write any of this. So very interesting. Uh, you know, think about that a little bit. You know, give, it, give it a thought, if you will. But to express these ideas to you is to limit what your experience of it is. And that's not what I'm here to do. 
So there are similarities, sure, between the different levels of reality and the different ways that connection can be explained. Uh, I don't want to limit your natural experience of it. But you're going to find similarities between mine and yours. Uh, but mine won't look exactly like yours. What I describe as connection and oneness and enlightenment is going to be slightly different than yours, if not wholly different, and vice versa. The key identifier for this experience of connection is implicit in the very name itself. In effect, connection is limitless awareness and the concrescence of consciousness. I know I said a lot there in that sentence. It is the connection between the different minds into one concrescent consciousness. Concrescence, the word basically means a joining together, a melding together. I was assuming, I was intending to name the book that I was writing, Concrescent Consciousness. However, that book is going to be released here for free. You can still call it Concrescent Consciousness if you'd like, whatever the case. But that was going to be the name of the book. Um, connection is limitless awareness and the concrescence of consciousness. You must be aware of the coalescing and kaleidoscopic binding of reality. That's connection. When you're aware of the connections of mind, you are experiencing a state of connection. In other words, it is a returning of the animula, or the Latin, the little soul, back to the nebulous of reality, what is commonly known as source consciousness in our case. So what is consciousness? Back to this. Because again, reality is a process. And so I'm presenting you these ideas in a very Tarzan through the jungle, swinging from one vine to the next sort of experience. So what is consciousness? I would urge you to regard it as a returning to source. That may sound strange because you think, well, I'm conscious right now. What does that have to do with source consciousness? I'm conscious. Just for a moment. Regard it as a returning, or at the very least, growing in this life so as to advance to the next, ultimately drawing closer to source. There's a trickiness to reality, though. Like a gesture, it mocks and pokes fun at us. Life is almost like a perfect teacher put here by a creator to instruct the would-be graduates on how they should proceed, what they need to change, and how they need to grow. An importance is placed upon finding one's own journey within the sea of possibilities. What's your story, in a sense? In another, it's about experience. It feels as though we are here not just to find the exit, but to truly experience what being here is. The beauty and the horror of it is all meant for a purpose. Perhaps to experience fully is the whole reason for this human experience. Perhaps we need to learn what it means to be an individual, to truly appreciate what it means to be a collective conscious. If you go away from this video knowing anything, having taken anything from it, let it be the ever-present truth, if I can call it that, that your path starts within. Nothing in this world will do for people like us. I'm just being honest with you. There will always be a sense and a desire for more than what this life, what this society can give us. The people who know there is more to life and we're here to do something, to learn something, and dare I say, to be something. For them, there is a voice that chimes. And, uh, you know, I get misled by the world sometimes if I could just say that, and we all do. But there's a voice in us that usually says, you are the experience, and the experience is you. In some way, shape, or form, we all 
hear this voice, this inner monologue, this inner intuition, this higher self, if you will, that reaffirms what the path is. And the path is you are this experience and this experience is you. How better to teach a transcendent godly being how to grow than to have it experience itself without knowing it's doing that. Therefore, the path is within. Because on a very strange level, this reality we experience is us. The energy, the mystery, even the path is you. With everything I say, please use your own discernment. You have a spiritual compass that is leading you home, that the purpose of it is to navigate you around the, the hokum. Uh, be encouraged by the fact that if you wholeheartedly commit to pursuing your purpose and reason, you will be led on a fantastic adventure to finding it. That is the one thing I can give you as certainty. When you draw the line in the sand yourself and you say, I want to figure out why I'm here, who I am, what the purpose of all of this is, doors will be open for you to discover that information. Will they be easy to traverse? No, but they'll be needed. They'll be necessary. So in this talk, I predominantly wanted to talk about connection, what it is, why it's so powerful. Uh, you can start with music. You can start with meditation, but I feel like everything we do goes back to connection. And you can call it whatever you want. Connection is just something I thought sounded cool. You can call it whatever you want, but connection seems to be the point. When I was a Christian and I would, I would worship and I would be swept up in these emotions and this energy, very much real energy, I would feel it emanating from my chest, this energy. You could call it the opening of the heart chakra, whatever, doesn't matter. But there was a real connection with something that wasn't me. Now I realize that connection was me. I was connecting to source. I was connecting to the central nebulous of this reality. And of course, it's going to be something that you can't see or grab and pull to you because this physical reality completely negates the spiritual. It goes against it entirely. Yes, it reflects the macrocosm. But the microcosm, I believe, is being referred to in the Hermetic text is the internal. This mind connecting to that mind. A lot of people think, and there may be some credence, but a lot of people think that the macrocosm relating to the microcosm and as above, so below, has to do with space and the uh, angular momentum that spins the galaxies and, and manifests the planets and the relation to our physical bodies and cells and things like that. And there may be some truth, but how much more important would it be to say that there is a spiritual or universal overmind that is much like this one that we can connect to because in the realm of mind as i said before there's no distance and if there's no distance in mind you are infinitely close if i can say that to source you are infinitely close. So, for instance, in, in uh, biblical texts, when Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is at hand, perhaps there is a deeper spiritual meaning to that than just, I'm the son of God and I'm here. It may mean that we are infinitely close, almost indivisibly close to source consciousness in this moment right now. And all we have to do is, as Ram Das says, polish the mirror. Clear off what's in front of you so that you can see the connection is established. Everything is here right now already for you. Uh, you can connect. Jesus, after all, symbolized the stairway to heaven. He even said it himself in the text. Uh, before long, you will see 
angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Like the stairway to heaven that Jacob saw earlier in Genesis in the Bible. And I don't mean to talk a whole bunch about the Bible, but if you're here, you know that I used to be a Christian. I used to be very, very into that and very obsessed with that. And I do think there's a lot of truth that can be gleaned from it. But I feel like with any spiritual establishment, there are going to be built-in limitations. Think, you know, consider this, if you will, for a moment. You have an infinite, transcendent God that is trying to express itself with beings confined to physical existence. Would any expression of that God that is transcendent and infinite be completely represented here in the physical? Impossible. Impossible. There is no way the infinity can be expressed in the finite. I'm speaking from a totally mathematical state here. You cannot express infinity in the finite. That's what calculus is about. Finding limits. Using infinity, but trying to make sense of infinity by getting infinitely close to a certain point. You cannot define infinity with finite measurements. That doesn't make sense. That's why the word infinity came about. It is beyond measurement. So you can't say that the book of the Bible or the Bhagavad Gita or the Vedas or the uh, Quran, anything holds within it the totality of infinity. It just doesn't make any sense. But if you believe that mind is connected to the overmind of God, of infinity, of source, then you don't need a complete one-to-one -one representation of the infinite uh, God here. All you need is to connect with that God. And mind is the distanceless path, the pathless path. How do you get to mind? And this is the kicker. We're coming full circle. How do you truly get to mind? You go within. You have to learn to observe the theater of the mind and what it truly means. For instance, you know, I always like giving methods and, you know, <laughs> things I'm learning I like to teach. But I'm not a teacher. It's required. <laughs> uh, sharing information is required. I had a, a trigonometry teacher some years ago, a couple years ago, and he would present us with information, and he would say, you have to know this. It's required. <laughs> and I've always held on to it. It's hilarious to me. But it's required. You have to know how to go within. And so what I've been doing lately is observing awareness. One thing I do when I wake up, I always try to astral project. Many mornings I don't. Many mornings I do. I get lucky. The, the technique works, whatever the case may be. Uh, some mornings I wake up and I focus on the darkness of my closed eyelids. But I focus on it expecting to see. This is the key. There's something about awareness that triggers when you expect to see something, as if awareness is the interesting connection between you and God. Another revelation. Connection is awareness of your relation to God. And so in that, it's possible that awareness is only triggered by your expectation to experience something. It's almost like you're, you're causing something to spawn in the game. And since you're in your mind, the realm of mind, you connect to it instantly. Now, as someone who astral projects, as someone who goes beyond this physical existence, you could believe astral projection is actually happening, like you're actually leaving your body. Remote viewing is you're actually seeing something somewhere else. You could believe Russell Targ and, you know, the Stanford Research Institute and all that other stuff talking about, you know, purveying things beyond the physical means, the ESP, whatever. Either way, you have to agree that astral projection, remote viewing, lucid dreaming, daydreaming for that matter, is a movement away from this physical reality 
to a very real reality that exists somewhere else. That is the reality of mind. And when you go within, you explore this realm of mind. When I astral project, I go to the realm of mind. The only difference is I'm kind of like lulling myself into it by believing I'm in a different body that's traversing. You don't have to do all that. Astral projection is supposed to be limitless, a boundless experience. So anyway, before making this video go on to a complete hour, um, focus on the darkness of your closed eyelids. And I've given techniques like this before, but this is a, an addendum, if you will. Expect to see things. And when you imagine you see something, remember, anything that takes place in the theater of the mind, especially imagination, exists. It's there. It happened. For you to have imagined something happen, it happened. If you didn't imagine it, it wouldn't have happened. But you imagined it. So, for instance, you know, I'll have my eyes closed and I'll be thinking about something. And I'll be expecting to see. And when I start to see like a glittering of something happening, a movement of color, not only will I accept that that is something that is happening, I'll also embellish it. I'll allow my mind, and this, is, this may be difficult, but I'll allow my mind to create what it is. And this came from a technique from my old mentor, not he who should not be named, but my, my Christian mentor. Uh, he expressed to me an experience he had of seeing things with his closed eyelids, seeing different places with his closed eyelids. And I've talked to many other people before who say that at some point in the middle of the night, they'll wake up and they'll be able to see through their eyelids. And they, they attribute that to the opening of the third eye, which it very well may be. I don't know everything about Buddhism or Hinduism, so it very well could be that expression. Um, but this is a way to activate it, your third eye or to activate the theater of the mind and to activate connection. This may be the first step. Expect to see something with your closed eyes. And when you see a little glint of anything, allow your imagination to tell you what it is. That'll be the hard part. Allow yourself to experience it. It'll feel like it's not happening, like, like you're not doing it. After a while, you'll, you'll just see things and they'll start to manifest. You'll see people walking in places and you'll see these silhouettes of things, you know. Um, over time, it will increase. And I've had it happen to where, completely genuinely, I'm not, I'm not embellishing anything to tell you to make myself seem cool, but I've had it happen to where I'll see an image pop up in my mind, an imagination pop up. And you, you know how imagination looks. I'm not claiming I'm seeing things in perfect 3D, HD, visual. No, it looks like something that I imagine, but I will accept that as a reality and I will allow it to unfold. And when it does, I am in that experience. I may slip into a dreaming state, but I'm in the creation of that world. I'm there, I'm connected to what's happening and I go to a different place entirely. So... Lots of interesting things can happen. I feel like this is the start of connection. If anything, this is the start of the book. This will be the first chapter, if you will. I don't know. I'm playing real loose with this. <laughs> if anything, I'll just be uploading it as an audiobook. But concrescent, uh, concrescent consciousness. Uh, so the first step of connection is becoming attuned or accustomed to the chills, to the feeling you get when you listen to a powerful piece of music or when you listen to someone uh, express an idea that resonates with your soul and to start experimenting with the theater of the mind. Start allowing your imagination to start the reel of that movie and watch it, go with it, allow it and know that it is actually something. Okay, that's it for this video. I'm not gonna go on any further. Uh, thank you guys if you stuck around to this. I hope it was useful. I hope you got something out of it and that it enriches your life and helps you move forward uh, to discover more of who you are and um, you know connect with more of what's out there. We're, we're all trying to discover, all right? Uh, we're both trying to figure this thing out. We're all trying to figure this out. Um, next video may be more about aliens. What I think that is may be more about 
uh, how astral projection looks. The I don't know. It's, it's going to be something. I'll put up a community post, let you guys know what that's about uh, before it comes up. This one, again, I'm not going to be editing too much of this. So if you hear me sniffing and all these other things, uh, I just woke up. <laughs> so um, I, I had to get these ideas out. I wrote it the other day and I, I had to get the ideas out. I'm not really concerned about the background or any of that business. I'm just, I'm here giving you these ideas. I'm eager to hear what you guys have to say. So comment them. You can email me if you really feel like it. Um, but I'll, I, I see you guys' messages. There's never been too many messages for me not to see them. I'll answer them. I'll see them. Unless you're being a jerk and or telling people that they're going to burn in hell because of their beliefs and not believing in one thing, I'm most likely not going to respond. Okay. But uh, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Blessings, love and light, namaste, and as always, never stop adventuring.